What's up, everybody? Welcome to a ramble cast. You know, one of them things where I'm lazy and I ramble for a long time with people. Well, typically with people. And I brought in the big guns. By big guns, I mean more than one, more than one guest. So, uh, introduce yourself. Uh, I am Matt the Vet from Fearless Games. Um, and I'm still Phil from from wherever. Somebody yeah, did give you. A suggested nickname. We'll talk about that in in a, in a podcast. Yeah, no, not in this. Yeah, but for now, you may know him as Flockmaster Phil. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> it's the worst. Anyways, <laughs> anyways, we are here because I decided it's time to get some people mad at me again, and that is means it's time to ramble Space Wolves. Uh, and I'm sorry, Space Wolf fans, but the three of us do not like them. So. Uh, <laughs> Hey, this isn't to gang up on the Space Wolves, although it's fun to do that sometimes. Uh, it's it more is so, super fun to do that. It's more so because, in all honesty, the Space Wolves, they're, they're, I feel like they could be cool. And this is for somebody who just doesn't like wolves, period. Uh, space Wolves could be cool. And be, real quick, I always compare them to the Blood Angels. Because the Blood Angels... You know, they have the, very much the angelic persona, they, you know, the hosts, the angelic host that they are. You know, their Primark was an angel, but, uh, <laughs> right? So, he's so had that. pretty, and he will never be a bad boy because he's a darling angel. Yeah, exactly. Yes, he was. But, he you was. know, they, the had that dark loved secret. they had that dark secret that they're kind of like, they, you can just say, hey, blood angels, they're kind of like space vampires. They don't twinkle, and they're not Transylvanian. You do not, yeah, not say not anything led... bad about the Emperor's baby golden boy. Exactly. They might have perfectly pointy teeth and drink blood and don't age it's, or nothing. It's, it's all implied, though. It's all, it's yeah. like, Wait, don't the, all the space Master is not a, age? Yeah, well, they, yes. But what they do is they sleep in, they sleep in golden sarcophagus and have their blood filtered through, through a machine. I thought yeah. it was only if they start succumbing to the rage now. No, that's okay. so you don't hopefully succumb to the rage. <laughs> yeah. uh, Blood angels also in the old fluff, I don't know if this is still true, are all, like, pretty. Like, they're... They, they, um... they prefer aesthetics above all, which is why all their gear is highly artificed. So. Yeah. Yes. And, and they seek um... perfection outside of combat through their artifice. And, you know, occasionally they devolve to needing the, having a need to drink blood, but they're not Transylvanian on top of being, you know, vampiric and they're not led by Vlad, you know? I, so right. it's like... I think the best part is... One, two things is, one, Mephiston used to have a rule, once he killed a dude, he had to roll a leadership check to not just stop what he was doing and drink the blood that was on the ground in front of him. Yeah. And two, speaking about them being all pretty and such, they do like being all pretty and such, but in, like, the book, um, Fear to Tread, one blood angel goes to another and goes, would have killed you to polish your armor before we had this meeting, and one other blood angel in the group gets really close to his armor and then leans back, and the dude goes, what? And he goes, forgive me, for a moment there, your armor looked purple and gold. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, they, they prefer aesthetics and artifice, but they're not like the pretty boys of the shop or children. Yeah. But they mm -hmm. can get that way. But, like, the thing is, you can describe them as being space vampires and, you know, angelic, but they're not over the top. It's all subtle. Whereas yeah, the space they, wolves they, are they, oh, in your okay. face, wolfen and Viking esque and reindeer sleigh. I mean, wolf sleigh. Um, <laughs> well, they have to have the wolf bolter with the wolf knife, with the wolf armor, with the wolf talisman, with the wolf shoes, with the wolf <laughs> extra armor upon the wolf machine spirit, wielding the wolf hunter killer missile upon the wolf Lehman Russ. Yes. I don't think you said wolf enough times. I didn't, but we would be here way too long for me to complete the whole sentence. It's like a custodian guard name. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Only nowhere near as deserving. Uh, anyway, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that's just through the fluff of their names. But no, in all honesty, the Space Wolves have potential, and I think the Space Wolves are at their coolest during the Great Crusade Horse Heresy time period. Um, but before we get into all that, let's get into a Wild West standoff good, the bad, and the ugly. We're going to start off with the ugly, which is aesthetically. What do you find particularly ugly? And, you know, refrain from saying the Space Wolf line and try to think uh, examples. 
That was literally <laughs> going my first thing. Everything sucks except for Bjorn the Fell Handed. Oh, that is a beautiful model. I will give him that. The new one is absolutely fantastic. But well, uh, for... Bjorn, the yeah. only decent space wolf in the entire <laughs> series. <laughs> uh. Honestly, Logan Grimner wasn't bad until they gave him his reindeer sleigh. Logan Grimner was true. bad. Can we all agree that Ragnar Blood Bloodmane is just the Black worst? <laughs> He is Black, the worst, because he's like, he was the blood claw turned captain, basically. Like, it's like, that doesn't work. Well, like, here's the thing. The story about him becoming that is interesting. The problem is, is because they set him up so high in the Codex, every story about him just makes him so Mary Sue, it makes that sister of battle chick look subtle. <laughs> yeah, so, right. getting back to the ugly. Yeah, so... Um, Go for it. Uh, so I'm just going to start with a couple really specific ones. I really hate the current Wolfen models. Oh, God. But I, you know what's sad about that? They are so well done for being so ugly. <laughs> right? And they're an improvement over the old ones. I didn't really like the old ones either, but these ones, like, they got so much aesthetically better, but at the same time just went too far off the wrong end of the spectrum and made crap. So, like, why did they become wolf ogres? Like, why couldn't they just be, like, classic wolfman? You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. They, they, they got this weird mix of things going on. It just It doesn't doesn't really work. Right. Um, I, uh, shoot. I, also, the other thing I really, really, really detest is Thunderwolf Calvary. Oh, Anyone wow. riding a giant wolf is stupid in my book. I, oh, well, let, 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 let's clarify that. If you're riding a giant wolf in intergalactic space combat with walking tanks of destruction <laughs> and having an armored land carrier known as the land raider and you're riding a wolf and yet you somehow have a better armor save than most of the stuff that should be better than you I, I, the, the, it just doesn't make any sense like i get it for the imperial guard right here's some cardboard here's an angry flashlight here's a bunch of horse-like things try to look impressive if chewbacca can live on endor then you must acquit yeah, so it does not make sense. You never saw that? I didn't. I don't want to know. South Park. Anyways. But, yeah, like, the... It just doesn't make sense to me. You have this guy, you know, what, nine-foot-tall space marine in a, nearly a ton of armor. Like, literally, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, I mean... They're not let, light. Let's, let's suspend the fact, and let's say that these, these wolves are really more like well, wolf-looking rhinoceros. Well, let's well, keep, yeah, well, so let's even keep that, in mind, like... let's keep in mind, in the fluff, those giant wolves used to be space marines. No, 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 no. That's not official, I don't think. That's in my own head fluff, right? But that's no, not real, right? There's, there's a lot of, um, there's been a lot of stories that heavily imply that after a while, like, the whole there are no wolves on Fenris is because they used to be people. Well, I mean, but it's also been the fact that they're not actually wolves. They're a genetic creation that looks like a wolf. Yeah, totally. They're actually more like a rhino. Yeah. No, I totally get that they are giant wolves, but I still can't see a living creature. Even, like, I imagine an elephant would have a hard time carrying a hundred, um, not a hundred, sorry, like uh, 2,000 pounds, a ton of equipment on its back into war. Yeah. And these things are supposed to be quick and agile. I see your Thunderwolf cavalry, and I raise you Murderfang. I was gonna say murder Ooh, bag. I was not gonna bring that up. That's gonna make it into the okay. bad category as well, because not just the model is an entry okay. alongside Cactus um, Wolf, because why have a dreadnought with a face showing? Okay, that's exactly. what I was gonna say. The model is really nice until you get to the head. Yeah. Yeah, like, it does d d deter from the whole, like, point of... A dreadnought. <laughs> yeah. But that, that goes with the space with the aesthetic of we don't wear helmets. Because but it bothers worse? their sense of smell because their sense of smell is better than the than the automated senses in the in the helmet. I actually kind of like that, and I think that's fine as a that's fluff fair, thing. But, like, this is a dreadnought, also known as a dreadnought sarcophagus. Yeah. yeah. The, the, the difference is, is you kind of lost, like, if you read, if you listen to Parting of the Ways, you lose all of your senses and they're replaced with robotics. Yeah, like, well, like it's a dead body that's a uh, near dead body reanimated in a giant war machine. It really shouldn't have any of its parts hanging out. Exactly. It's not good. Well, depending, like, they. 
some of them are never actually died. They stayed alive oh, no. long enough to be sustained. This is it. This is near dead. Yeah. They're, they're mostly like, dead. Outside of that, and they're a torso and a head. Like, that's what it is. They, they cannot survive without the Dreadnought Sarcophagi. Like, it is a person that is terminal that they were like, We'll shove you in this iron lung with killer robot arms and say yep. hope for the best. They don't almost really died the because yep, they don't almost died because he was removed from his. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but also the name is stupid. Like Murder Fang is not a good name. Murder Face, Murder Face. Murder like, Face is awesome, and that's because Metal Apocalypse is great, and that is different from this. Well, that's what I'm saying. You know, like you can't take you can't take inspiration from something like that because <laughs> it's awesome in its own right. Combining it with Space Marines doesn't make it double awesome. Yeah, Murder Face in Metal Apocalypse. For people that do not know what Metal Apocalypse is, go go watch it. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a great Hulu, I think, right now. death metal satire, and it's the most metal thing ever. And it has but Murder Hallow Fang is not. Does it? Who's Mark Hamill? He's half the evil council. Well, that makes sense, right? Yeah. <laughs> he's the punk dude. Hamill. He's he's that like military, not the military guy, but like the evil dude in the business suit, that super tall one. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Like he's <laughs> half that council is Mark Hamill. I think the cream, the the cream of ugly for space wolves is Logan Grimnar on his Storm Rider boat sleigh thing pulled by wolves with some motors. Okay. It's again like it. I feel it's like the same deal with with um, Murder Fang. Visually, it's not bad, but design-wise, it looks stupid. Oh well, you know, I, the detail on these models are fantastic. The problem is they're detailing something absolutely silly: a yep. Viking-esque hover ship pulled by wolves. <laughs> It is a hover chariot pulled by wolves, you're right. It and is a looking storm at it, rider armed with his axe. Let's see, an ancient artifice immense power. The old wolf inspires the initiation. Now, they, this is how bad it is. They don't fully describe it in the model description on the website. They kind of glaze over the fact that he's in a sleigh. It, it bugs me because I remember the first time I saw this thing, and I just, I think, James, you were there. I saw like, one of those, like, what is this stupid thing? Yeah, and I it's just, like that's slow <laughs> It makes no sense. You have a you have a hover device. Uh, uh, it's a hover boat. It's like a little <laughs> hover skiff. Yeah. That fits only one, so it's a little hover floaty, I guess. It's and a hover boogie board. It's a hover yes, it's a hover boogie board with a little bit of armor that he's riding around without any way of holding himself in and it's pulled by wolves like why don't you just strap an engine and something on there so yes. you can pilot it they they, they they went through the trouble of putting a grav plate on it and there are little engines on the back of it yeah. if you look there are engines on this thing why doesn't it self propel like I why would you it. have this thing that carries your 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 ruler and your head captain being pulled by two wolves. Like, these things can get shot and killed. They're not wearing any armor. Like, no, this thing like, just that's makes the, no that's sense. That's the whole point. It's like, we shall... And I look at this and I go, okay, I'll, let's, let's let's entertain being pulled by wolves. Logan Gumnar, we have a battle on the atmosphereless moon. Oh, maybe you should walk. It's like... <laughs> I get can't take my cool sled with me today. Oh, no. <laughs> hey, it's a volcanic planet. They'll be safer there. Dang. It's like... <laughs> no, that that goes into the whole theory of they can survive in any environment that the Space Marines can. But the Space Marines can't survive in vacuum. They have a helmet for that. <laughs> well, these wolves clearly are like Frieza. <laughs> uh, uh, well, unless they want to bring up... Oh, sorry. Oh, no, but like... Uh, it's... It, it, the problem is... The, the, the little skiff Viking S thing, great detail on it, right? Yeah. Logan Grimnar, a lot of really great detail, a genuine improvement over his old model. The nice thing is, you can build it so he's, he's removable from there and you can actually have him be useful. Um, but, like, <laughs> I just don't understand. If you want to have wolves along, like a wolf pack of stuff with you, you know, to be cannon fodder and soak up some wounds like they use in the game usually. Fine, yeah, but like, it doesn't mean they have to be. Grecky. It doesn't mean they have to pull your sleigh. It doesn't mean you have to have a sleigh. Like what? what what's going on One here? That I will give credit that I like about the design here. I like that the axe that he has, which is supposed to be a demon corn axe, actually yeah, the blade, awesome. 
the blade is shaped like a um, berserker helmet. Yeah, and if you notice, it's, it's, it's the way it's painted. It definitely doesn't look like normal from Christian ruins. Yeah. So that's good. Another problem is that he's really who's switching around. Sorry, that's me. I'm trying to fix my computer. I'm sorry if that can be heard. Like, it doesn't. I mean, that's a problem in and of itself. You're wielding an axe of corn. I don't care if you purify the quote unquote. It's an axe of corn. Uh, read yeah, it Wrath turns out he did it in the Read Wrath of Magnus. It's not purified. No, I know it's not. But in his eyes, he'll say it's purified. Because <laughs> the corn demon went, "Hey, use me, and I'll fix, and I'll stop Magnus for you." He's like, "Okay, corn demon." Yeah, that's a whole other can of worms. That's problematic. It's like. Anyway, but just for aesthetics, what's the last thing you had, Phil? Uh, the last thing for me, and this is a weaker one, but I have to explain this. And that is just the general, um, how do I want to put this? So, like, general Space Wolf design bugs me on one level. Like, yes, I like the fluff that they don't like wearing their helmets because, like, it messes with their senses and they like having their senses keen. But what bugs me is they have, like, all these insane hairstyles that don't fit in helmets. Because sometimes yeah. you should just put your helmet on, like, when you're in space. And, like, I totally get, like, a lot of, like, the, the Norse feel with, like, the braided beards and mustaches and, like, some of the crazier things. But, like, a two-foot mohawk when you have to put on, like, a helmet is dumb. You know, you're, you're exactly I right. They, I think they address that in one of the Ragnar books. Yeah, what happens is they get terrible, the worst of helmet hair. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> but, like, it's, it, and what's also kind of silly, it's like, the, if you look at one of their bits, it's a wolf helmet. Like, it looks yep. like a wolf head. The whole point it. of that, fluff-wise, is that it doesn't impede their senses. Yeah. Oh. So just wear the helmet. <laughs> just yeah, like, they don't have enough of those helmets, clearly. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but, uh, so... Now it's time for the bad. Well, well, can I can I just say, like I have one ugly thing that I want to bring up. Um, vis it's more it's visually here, is Locus the trickster. Yeah, Locus. Yeah. When I look at his face, all I think is. <laughs> he's he's a... got a bad looking face. Yeah, his, his model face... is so. I hate his head so much. Let me look at this thing. I haven't looked at it in a long time. The problem with his head for me is that it also feels disproportionate to the rest of him. Same with that power claw. Like, it looks like he stole a, like, a Primark power fist. That he has a leprechaun head. He has a leprechaun head with, like, a dreadnought power fist. It's true. Well, I think the problem with this is they wanted to get that trickster feel with the big grin and the smile lines, and they just... They went a little too far. <laughs> like, I expect them to go, you can't have me pot of gold. But, uh, <laughs> wow. be lucky charms, you, you little bastards. <laughs> this was a total other way than I expected it to go. Lucky but, like, pissed. But, like, look, Lucas is, he's, 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 a, he's got the red hair and just that, that grin of, like, be hearty, you can't have me pot of gold. So, like. I mean, he's, he's clearly supposed to be, like, a, a Loki corollary, but. Of he, course he is. Yeah. He just doesn't work. You're right. Like, the proportions are terrible on this model. So, I never even noticed, because I just I hate his rules so much. I never looked at the model. I want a field goal punt, a, the starting off with the bad, with Canis Wolfborn. Canis Wolfborn's whole fluff is that he is a feral space wolf who can't even speak. He can guttural growl and communicate with the wolves. And he's a wolf lord. Who is this? Candace Wolfborn. Does He's he a special character on the Thunderbolt Calvary, yes. Yeah. His whole big thing is that he is the most feral of the Fenrisian warriors because he is a, literally a wolf brother. He really can't speak. What? <laughs> I will say, to be fair, at least on his model, his, his Thunderbolt is the only one that wears armor. Yeah, because, like, and it's, I think his back left leg is a bionic leg, too. Yeah. Yes, it is. But, um, most of the models tend to have a single... Um, robotic piece on them sometimes. Yeah, probably because they got the leg blown off by weapons fire because they shouldn't be in a battle zone. <laughs> but... um, now all I'm thinking of is now that you describe that to me, I'm thinking the way that he got promoted was like that episode of Vector's Lab where all he could say was Omelette du Yes, that's so exactly what like, happened. Cadis, what is your what is your opinion? Arr! 
My gosh, we could go through the pass of Gar and count them off. That's brilliant. <laughs> brilliant. <laughs> like, he's basically, you know how he could make a really feral werewolf and werewolf the Forsaken? He is that yeah. in space form. <laughs> yeah. Like, and I, the reason why I put it in the bad category is, really? Number one. Number two. Really? And then number three... The whole point is that of the Space Wolves and Space Marines is that they are transhuman super soldiers. You can't... No. <laughs> Let's put no. it this way. Russ was raised by wolves, and he was a very elegant speaker at times. Yeah, yeah it's true. Like, like I, I don't know if he's been retconned a bit to be able to actually speak. I don't know. He was... But from what I remember when he was first... Um, first like introduced as a thing he basically is a wolf or thinks he's a wolf <laughs> well so. he still he still was ra he's the most feral and destructive warrior of all of fenris he was raised by a peck of fenrisian okay, wolves i got to stop you right there is everybody the most feral and destructive Fenrisian? Because like yes. every other descriptor is i'm the most feral and destructive of Fenrisian armies <laughs> well Yes. If we're going to start, if we're going to talk bad, um, I think I can one-up you with this. Well, Murderfang on one's up it, too. Well, I mean, not, let's, not, let's be real. I think, I think even this guy may even one-up Murderfang. Okay. Um, and one second, I'm, um, let me just get the name correct here, because... Are you talking about uh, um, the Redmore? It is... From Fort uh, World? Hold on, let me let me get this because I forget the name of the guy. One I, think, he's a, I know who you're talking about. You are, and but he, I need to say his name because yeah, yeah. he is awesome because he is so bad, and I can't stand him because he's so bad. It's so bad. It's so bad. Oh, I hate this guy it's so much. Oh, no, it, it really is this one of the case? worst things oh, for ever done. Glenn Redmaw. Yeah. I don't even know what this thing is. I can't okay. find it. Mr. He goes Krenos. Mr. Phil, yes, he what? literally, when, what it is, is he, he has succumbed to the wolfen. So they give him all of the wolf dudes. His pack is, his company is the wolfen company, because they're the ones that are so susceptible to it. When he succumbs to the rage, he turns into a werewolf from, like, American werewolf and London werewolf. Not only that, he turns into it and explodes out of his power. <laughs> Hold well, on, I'm looking this up. I need to see this. He doesn't have a model. He doesn't have a model because they Forge were, went, we can't make this. They, we can't. Well, they did have one. There was a test model of him out, and then G they put him at a at a games day, but they couldn't get a green light for the model. Yeah, because because people with calmer heads prevailed and said, we can't do this. We just can't. Um, like, I'm going to find this model. This. <laughs> there he is. I actually found this mini. Oh god. The, the weirdest thing is, mini is that actually isn't bad. It's his fluff that's so stupid. <sighs> of course, his fluff is stupid because he turns into a werewolf. Yeah. So to bring up something that you kind of brought up at the beginning when you were comparing them to the Blood Angels, because I kind of do the same thing, where like you look at the Blood Angels and you see what the the pieces are that they put in to create the fluff of the Blood Angels, where it's like they're yeah. vampiric. Uh, they have high aesthetics, they're angelic, they have kind of a Greco-Roman thing going on a little bit. Cool. Space Wolves is very clear, like, they wanted a wolf aesthetic, they wanted some werewolf bits, and they wanted some Norse stuff. But somewhere in there, they decided to crank them all up to 17 out of 10, and blew everything way in the wrong direction, and it just does not work out because there's no subtlety in any of it. Oh, you know, you're absolutely right. And the, the problem is, is, like... With the Blood Angels, everything has got subtlety. There's a certain percentage for everything. Greco Roman having the highest percentage aesthetically yeah. and everything. Which is that, that's totally cranked up, especially on those what are those guys, the Sanguinary Guard, where they're yeah, just like, Sanguinary Guard. And it, it kind of, I kind of hate it, but I kind of get its point. And like, it's just that we are really artificed awesomeness, right? And that's yeah. cool, but because it's all subtle, it's not like we, it's not like we drink the blood and we're led by Vlad. You know, it's none of that. It, like, if we look the at Space Wolves, they're 100% Wolf. werewolf, 100% Norse, 100%... No, it's too much. They're, they're, they're half man, half bomb, half robot. And then you realize they have too many halves. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like, all the things separately are cool ideas. Like, I'm super into werewolves, if anyone knows me. And I they're think Norse awesome. stuff's pretty cool. 
and I, I I think primal feral space marines could be cool. And then you shove it all together, and you get this it's terrible, not- horrible mess. Like Brad Redmaw is when I when I I don't have the book with me, but I have the book he's in, and I read it. I shut the book and went done, done with space wolves, <laughs> just done. And it's like I was just like I'm done, no more. Uh, it, 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 here's the problem, right? Uh, Canis Wolfborn, Murder Fang, this dude Red Maw. Take your uh, Ragnar Blackmane. I dropped the you, pictures of Red Maw for you guys. Yeah, and yeah. then like Arjack Rockfist. He's in the band for the pure reasoning is. We must have our fleet planted on the ground. We will drop pod. We will we will insert from space on ships. We will not teleport. I throw my hammer and teleport back to my hand. Exactly. Well, he's like, so much. That's right. that she's totally fine with the Nadmadasin teleport. Yeah, but he's teleporting no. it to him. Absolutely not. Like the That's space so specifically in their fluff are so anti teleporters that even one teleport on one of their guys is so annoyingly stupid and hypocritical to me. Now the thing is, the Fang is full of has a fully functional teleportarian because as much as they hate it, they understand. Hey, when stuff hits the fan, we're gonna need it, right? Yep, they totally will deep strike they, when they can, when they have to. They are, and I'm fine with that. I'm fine. Like I, I like that fact. It's kind of like toss me, but don't tell the elf, right? I'm yeah. okay with that. <laughs> but like, when you don't like teleportation because you don't trust it to yourself, and then you're gonna trust a ha- First off, why are you hurling your hammer as a range attack? Because Number one. did it. Number two. Why, why do you trust the technology with your most prized weapon when you won't trust it with anything else? Yeah, then not only do you trust it with your most prized weapon, you trust it to bring it back to your hand with no adverse side effects. Like, Every time. Like, you, like it's not going to magically materialize in your lung by accident one time. Like, like that's like real, that's what you're worried about, but yet you're doing it. <laughs> and it's not even like he can shoot a gun or he can throw a hammer. It's like, no, he can just throw the hammer. Yep. It's both a range and a melee. It's like, come on, really? It's but basically like, said, like, I have this cool hammer. I want to use it all the time. I really need a range way of hitting things. Uh, you know that teleportation stuff we never use? I'm just going to strap it on my hammer because I don't want to use a gun because I'm too awesome for that. The thing is, our Jack Rockfist, I am having kind of a silly name. Um, it's kind of a cool not, silly name, though. Yeah, he's not bad outside of that. He is, like, the champion of the Space Wolves, basically. Yeah. And then it's like, and I throw my hammer, and it's like, oh, come on. Stop. Just yeah. stop. <laughs> well, mm-hmm. they needed a Thor. That's, no. No, they you know don't. What actually kind of bugs me thinking about it. Like, all their fluff is so heavily Nordic, and no one uses a damn spear. No, because they got axes. Yeah, but, like, the spear was the weapon of Odin. Yeah, but... They all have Odin. They got Logan Grimnar. He's got a demon axe. Uh, I'm making sounds. <laughs> <laughs> well, like no, they like, have a librarian not... that has a staff that's sort of that's like a spear. Not a spear. <laughs> Odin, you know, the All Father used a spear. I'm okay with them. If that I'm is a great fighting. ranged weapon, by the way, because you can throw it and it makes sense. Yeah, and it comes I'm okay back with to them me. And... Implying stuff like this without having it be straight up Odin spear or whatnot. Yeah, I'm okay with that because they got crack into chain swords and whatnot. I, I'm okay right. with them having like their own little brand of weaponry with the Norse. The, my problem with the bed when it comes to like fluff and rules and stuff is that you you cranked it up to 15 for no reason with everything. Like yes. I look at they they really got me angry with enchanted alien ice. Yeah, well that's <laughs> how they shoot their ice weapons. Um yeah. It's like enchanted alien ice, not Fenris ice, alien ice. I mean technically it's not it's not a uh, Terran ice, so it's alien ice regardless. But no, like, it has to come from Fenris technically. It is made from off planet. But also like why does it have to be ice? Why can't they just have like why can't they just do the whole joke of cold fusion or something? <laughs> like, 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 why does it have to actually be enchanted ice? Why does Murder Fang's claws have to be ice claws? <laughs> like, why? Because why? Like, they also wanted to amp up the, the, the other side, as we didn't talk about, like the, the severe cold concepts. 
which I don't really get how they added that in. I mean, yeah, Nordic countries are not the warmest, but I don't well, really because get because their planet of Fenris is a death world that's really cold, except for the part of the year where it's really hot. Mm-hmm. Because, because here, okay, here, here it is, and the way it's described in Ford World's uh, Horus Heresy Book Seven actually is a, it's not doesn't make it good, but at least they describe it in a way that's not like done through mystic tales. And basically, Fenris has a cycle of seasons, right? The seasons mm-hmm. are sucks, sucks more, really sucks, sucks. Oh my God, it's hot and it sucks, right? Like that's the seasons, basically. <laughs> and, I can dig those seasons. It's kind but, of like what it is now. And, like, what happens is the planet only really has one permanent continental shelf thing, and that's where the fang is. The uh-huh. is. Everything else constantly gets uh, all the tectonic plates and shift and stuff shift permanent, always are shifting. There's never really permanent <coughs> land except for where the fang is. So the land is in constant upheaval of freezing, melting, reforming, freezing, melting, all that stuff. That's yeah. the, the planet is in, like, is in, is in its teenage moments constantly of just growth and all that type of stuff so the problem is that it's really cold and then it's not really cold <laughs> and then it gets really cold again and it's like so you're not even keeping it just being like if you kept famous just as a frozen death world of deathiness and cold fine but you, you had to go crazy and have the world also like basically melt down and reform again <laughs> it's like why yeah they're like it's it's, it's always ice except for when there's volcanoes yeah, basically. Like, oh, it's so they can. De- it's so when what? So when they when they did recent events on Fenris, they can go. It's okay. Fenris will be better. Yeah, but yeah. also, I look at what they do fluff wise and all the in- influence on the space wolves, and I go, you could save a whole lot of grief if you just t- cut, cut, cut the like, just cut the Norse out, right? And the reason yeah. I say that is. You have an Imperial Guard Regiment, the Valhalla Ice Warriors. Mm-hmm. The thing about the Valhalla Ice Warriors is they're space Russians. Pretty much, yeah. Mm-hmm. You wouldn't. Oh, think aristocratic that... space Russians. Well, no, that that's that's that's, oh, that's the Volstrians. Well, the Volstrian Firstborn, which are like Cossack Russian. You're right. You're the, both, you're the, right. The, the Valhalla Ice Warriors are just straight up Red Army in space, right? Yeah, which they really are. Fine, but don't call them the Valhalla. Ice Warriors. You know, like, take that Norse stuff that you are putting way too much emphasis on space wolves, transfer it to them. Let them have the feast of living because they're going to die tomorrow. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I think it would make more wolves, sense. <laughs> if they cut out one thing or another, it'd be cool. Like, primal kind of uh, werewolfy space marines would be really cool. I totally agree with you on that. If you just, and especially, like, Ice World, too. Awesome. That all sounds pretty cool as a gimmick all together. Just drop the Norse part. Be a pretty pretty sweet, I think, right? Yeah, and like even if they want them to look Viking, like visually you can you can have the whole feral wolf thing and almost have it feel Viking esque because it's gonna kind of do that, right? Okay, fine, whatever. Yeah. But like you, it's just it's too much. Like that was my big complaint that people kind of got in my original ramble about myself back in the day like 40k is all about extremes and over the top right that's yeah. how you, that's just everything in 40k and i fully acknowledge that with everything the prior problem with the space rules is that it's too over the top for 40k standards for me now this is why some people absolutely love it but i just feel like the space rules are the all like the space rules to me are like that power gamer in D and D who goes, "I'm gonna make a warrior who can do pick locks, can heal people, and knows magic." Wait, what? Just be a warrior. Let the rogue pick locks. No, I'm gonna pick locks too. Why? Because, because that's not the space. That's how the space rules feel, yeah. right? And I'm okay with them having a feral cunning, but let it, let's just let sleeping dogs lie at feral cunning let's not then like beat a dead horse by describing how feral and cunning they are right we get the point from feral cunning like you don't have to go super in depth with it and then you don't have to go super in depth with how bestial they are and wolfen like when they're giving us wolf at the same time like you can like pull a blood angel and have it be subtle in blood angels are very over the top still in their aesthetics they're so greco-roman it hurts even though one of their dead cousins is named taicho right they're so greco-roman it hurts Visually. Yeah, sure. And I'm okay with that because that's also very much space, you know, Star Taste thing, Grapple Roman aesthetics. But yeah. um, 
but everything else about them is subtle enough where now don't get me wrong some people might feel space uh the, the blood angels are too much i get that you might but it, it, when you compare them they're like whoa subtle in comparison to space Wolves. it's true it's, now there's one I, thing i want to complain about with the bad one before before we move on okay uh, and this is a big thing for me on their fluff and mechanics, and reason probably the main reason why I don't like the Space Wolves is that they're so similar to Chaos. Oh, it's true. When if you look at their Odyssey development. When I yeah. first in, was introduced fully to the Space Wolves, like fluff, it was in White Dwarf when they were doing a story of the Wolfen, and I just saw a picture of. It's that famous picture of the werewolfy looking like um, Space Wolves. Yeah, black and white. Um, yeah, the black and white one where yeah. one's holding, bringing back his claws and it kind of looks like they may be bloodied, but it's black and white, you can't tell. Mm -hmm. And I thought they were a unit of Chaos Marines. And yes. then I was told those were Space Wolves, and I'm like, how are they not immediately sanctioned by the Inquisition? Mm -hmm. And I'm glad in the current right. fluff they finally have started dealing with that, but like, yes. as someone plays so much Inquisition, every time I look at them, I'm like, these guys are using chaos. They even have sorcerers. They need to be sanctioned either on yeah, genetic, no, 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 or no, no, genetic no, no, no. aberrations. They're not using sorcerers. They're using priests because they're pure magic. And it's uh, ruined it's priests. Magic. And they're a different. They're a different sect of priesthood from the iron priests. So it's yeah, okay. It's it's uh, the whole hypocritical BS they have with their whole. We're not using librarians. It's okay. We are not count. We're not. We're, we're not negating the cancel of Nikit. I'm like, you are. You're using magic. There yeah. is. Do you even um, I call it magic? You say it's the magic yeah. of Fenris. Yeah, it's Fenris. they're drawing from from Rissian's spirit mother. It's okay. No, it's not okay. It's the um, same damn thing. <laughs> you know, with that, when you look, and especially in the older codices, you look at a Chaos Codex, and you look at the old Space Wolf Codex of this of of that edition. If I get, I think the third or fourth edition Codex for each, something around there, and you go, wow. Chaos Chosen are wolf guard, basically. Yeah. And wolf lords are chaos lords. Like, it's so close like that because old Chosen could be broken down into lead squads back in their older book. That's how the wolf, you know, the, the veterans of Space Wolves were as well. You could break them down to lead squads. And it, it, it was such a mirror that it was, I found it kind of funny because they're counted on, they're counted as loyal. The Space Wolves are described as loyal, yet kind of their own, like, kind of isolationists, but loyal to the Emperor. Yeah. And to a certain degree, th with how the Horus Heresy treats them and what Forgeville kind of writes for them, I'm okay with certain stuff I, I found a little weird in the past. It doesn't make it, like, them great or anything for me, but... I liked how Fordrill addressed certain things. It was very much Fordrill going, we see issues, we're going to address them during the heresy era, so at least it makes sense when we write in 30K. And I kind of like that. But that leads us to, and I saved the best for last, especially for all the Space Wolf fans out there who are probably raging against the machine or their computer. Yeah, um, this is why we want to save the good stuff for the end. The good. And... My absolute favorite thing, all the spatials, is their Primarch Leem on Russ. He is a beast love, guy. I love how Black Library describes it. Because Forge World doesn't really go into it in Book 7. But I love how Black Library basically had him in one passage of a book go, like, talk normal and be like, yeah, I put on an act in front of my Legion. They expect me to be like them. How can I be like them? I'm a Primarch but I must keep up appearances. And how he really, despite being like this bloodthirsty warrior people think him to be, how he thought he was pleading to Magnus when he's really talking to it, like somebody impersonating Magnus, a demon impersonating Magnus. Yep. Basically, he tried to he tried to avoid the bloodshed on, on, on... He tried to avoid the bloodshed in a different manner that Magnus tried to avoid the bloodshed in the beginning of, of, the, of the Battle of Prospero where he was trying to psychically communicate to Magnus, but he's actually talking to a demon who wasn't listening. Yep. Yeah. And he pleaded going, brother, don't make me do this. I don't want to do this. Just I come back to his father. Was going to do. Like, like, let me take you back to our father. Just don't make me do this. But what I liked about him a lot is because I, when, when there was no reply, he said, well, 
I got to do this, and I'm not going to hold back. And he did. And I, I really liked that about Lehman Russ's character. You know, it's, it's like... I appreciated the fact that he basically showed he did not want to kill... He, he didn't do what he did out of, yay, I'm going to go crazy because I really want to kick this guy's ass. So he went, crap, this is what's expected of me, so I got to do this. He said, I am loyal to the Emperor. I don't want to do this, but the Emperor has commanded it. If you do not comply, I am not going to hold back. Mm -hmm. That's his whole shtick. And, and I really appreciate that about his character a lot. Yeah, and what I like about him is that um, one he tamed the Space Wolves. Yeah. One interesting thing also in a recent audiobook was Russ actually had ordered everybody, you know, show um, – um, when you go out there, remember you are fighting your own brothers. Take no honor or pleasure from killing them, but show them no mercy either. Right, and this is actually the first, in the timeline, the first case of Brother vs. Brother. Yep. It was Battle of yeah. Bro. First official case, not counting the potential case of the Lost Legions, but that's a different thing. That's a whole different thing. Gran and, the, and Russ. Well, yeah, but they got angry. That, that, that's a brother's quarrel. True. Versus outright purge a legion. Yes. Like, it's like, it's like, it's, it's, there's a little bit of a difference there. But, like, the thing I really like about what, how Lima Russ is portrayed through Four Girl is that the Space Wolf Legion was degenerating horribly without their Primarch. Not, like, physically necessarily, although that kind of was a thing that actually showed up after being reunited with the Cadiz Helix of Lehman Russ. But uh, they took great pleasure in butchering a routed foe. Like, they would do a typical spear attack to decapitate the foe, and then when the foe was routed and was fleeing in panic, they grinned, licked their lips, and basically tore into everything combatant, non-combatant alike, in an orgy of blood and slaughter. To the point where they basically had legionary commissars that were the most, te the, the, the most like, tempered of their legion, ve uh, veterans of their own legion, who could resist that urge, that had to restore order with summary executions in the field of their own brothers yep. to get them to the back in line. They were going crazy. And when Lima Rush showed up, <clears throat> it tempered everything. Him and his culture of Fenris tempered the Legion. And I found that a really neat concept, especially looking at the 40K-ness. You have Bjorn, the last link to Lehman Russ, who awakens every so often and basically helps temper his chapter. But if you look at them over the fluff of their timeline, they're slipping. They're clearly slipping. They're no longer as tempered as they used to be. They've definitely gotten more feral for feral's sake than what they are as a Legion. Like, they need their medicine, and they're not getting it, is my theory. And I, even if that's not true, the way Fordrill kind of implies that via describing what, how the Legion got reforged and tempered with his presence makes them, for me, more interesting. And I like that concept that would be really cool to run with, because they really are. Logan is wielding an axe of corn and says, sure, demon of corn, do your thing. Like... That wouldn't happen if they were tempered properly still. <laughs> like, it's very true, yeah. And I also really like their, comp, their, their theater of war is mobile is mobile, pow, mobile firepower. Like, the whole reason the, the, the Grey Hunters exist is because, as a Legion, they needed mobility of firepower on the foot soldier level. So that's why they fight the way they fight and are equipped the way they, they are equipped, is so they can get, so they can be a whirlwind of destruction quickly. And it just helped it helped convey what Fordrill's trying to say about these guys. And they say it about the Thousand Sons too, and I'm gonna bring that up here because of that. Both legions are described as we expect them to be. Feral and cunning for the, the space wolves and aggressive and bestial and wolf and wow, look at me, right? And the Thousand Sons are like, you know, sorcerer supremes. But Fordrill does a really good job in their fluff and having stated, don't forget at the core, they're both Astartes. Thousand of Sons aren't frail magicians. They're super soldiers that are capable of bashing your skull in with their fists, and they're just as good at doing it as any of the Legion. Don't forget that. And the Space Wolves are transhuman super soldiers with intellect. Don't forget that. And it's a, I like that dichotomy of describing it, and it makes me appreciate the Space Wolves as a Legion more. Because they bring it up, but the Space Wolves don't care. They're the Emperor's executioners in Book 7. They do what they do without any 
cause of concern for how they're viewed because the emperor decrees it for them. And the emperor gives them a lot of leeway. He had a hand in building the fang to make them fully self-sufficient. He let them have certain gear. He let them have their ruin priests. He gave them exceptions to multiple rules on purpose. So it's interesting as a legion, but then you look at the chapter and you go, you had so much cool stuff going on and you flushed it all down the toilet. <laughs> yep. Like, it's cool. Like, if they stayed as they were as a legion in their chapter form, being the emperor's executioners, the chapter that will do it, even though they don't necessarily wish to do it out of, out of lust and, and enjoyment of it, they would get more respect from me and, and, and my book, personally, be like, okay, I get it. You know, I get it. You have this these chapter trappings of, of culture and fluff because at the end of the day, you got you to gotta kill babies and do things nobody wants to do. I get it. But... No, we have wolves and people who can't even speak who lead our forces. <laughs> so, who's got some good to add to that? Um, I'd have to say, for me, um, aside from Lehman Russ, because I, like I said, Lehman Russ is probably the best dude out there, especially after that whole monologue in A Thousand Sons. Um, mm. Not, not um, Prospero Burns, I mean. Um, yeah, yeah. I feel... The one of the better things out of the Space Wolves is Bjorn. Like if you look oh, at yeah. if you look at Bjorn's Bjorn's backstory, Bjorn's character and how he acts, he I think is the perfect example of what all the other Space Wolves should be like. You're absolutely right, and I and that brings me back to my concept that he helps temper them because he remembers his Primark because he was there. He probably high fived him. Yeah. At least more ones. Yeah. That's how his hand became. That's how his hand became the full hand. Uh, and the, the, the Primark. Yeah. High five the Primark once. Lost my hand. Uh. Yeah, that's how he <laughs> lost his hand, man. Not that whole demon well, thing. It became awesome. <laughs> yeah. Um, but you know what? As cool as Bjorn is, my concern is that he's going to become Giger. Who? Giger, fell hand of burning a Prospero. Oh, um, Greycore. Um, oh, Giger, Gygor, G G E I G O R. It's, it's pronounced Greycore. Well, there's no R. It's G E I G O R. Yeah. But whatever. The, the dude in Burning of Prospero, that was the bear dude. But in no, the bear dude is Bjorn. Is Bjorn. He's the dude. He's a dude. Oh. So, um, a, a very similar they, title in the box set. They. What it is is he. Um, they've already established the fluff that he's part of the Lost Thirteenth. Yeah, it's just it's but like because um, it's just in the next n- edition. He's going to be part of the Lost Earth to return as a Dreadnought, known as Bjorn. Um, <laughs> because he was, because their fluff is just significantly different. Um, Gre- um, Grigor is, um, he um, actually fought Araman in the fluff now. And well, yeah, of course. That's, he's in, that's why they're in the box set. And he, um, and he, um, is part of the, if I remember correctly, he is part of the 13th Company, and he was one of the dudes that got lost in the warp chasing after Magnus. Oh, you know, they, he, they're not the same dude, but it's, they, it's like, I feel like, like in, like, a several editions, they will be. I just doubt the way it. That, <laughs> like, 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 just the way it's going to get absorbed. I, I only, I doubt it because, because GW doesn't do that, really. No, but they, it's they, they Wolf, replace so they... you like they replace you know Mala with 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 Bellicor, um, and um, they replace the lone guardsman that stood up to Horus with Sanguinius, but um, <laughs> they don't really merge characters together. They kind of just hope you forget they existed. Yeah, yeah. I really think they 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 lost a goal. Like they they. They miss out on a really good opportunity with Gygor and Bjorn. And with that, I think they should have copied Armin and Orzmud. Um, Orzmud was Armin's brother who died to the yes. flesh chain of the House of Sons. Yep. And he is mentioned in Book 7 as a character, not as a special character, but he's mentioned in the book at, in the past tense, meaning he's gone without yep. them saying in that. The but he's very much a plot. Yeah, no, but I mean, in Book 7 of Forge Wars Heresy, he's mentioned as a character. Yeah. 
Hmm. And he's mentioned uh, this dead dude who was invented solely to be Hammer's dead brother is mentioned in Book Seven uh, at least two to three times, and Bjorn is not mentioned once. <laughs> the dude who is who is this, the special character of the space world that everybody knows about from the Hor- the Great Crusade Horus Heresy isn't even mentioned. The dude who fought on Prospero isn't mentioned. The dude who's still alive. Not the dead brother. The dude who's still alive is not mentioned in Book 7. And I feel like they could have pulled an Araman and had Giger and Bjorn have a relation. Right? The reason I say that is because... Their names his... are spelled pretty much the same, just with different letters. <laughs> and Gygor's uh, lightning claw stylistically looks just like the stylistic cues on his on the blade of his claw. It's just like the stylistic cues on Bjorn's claw. Not that that matters, but... What you, what they could have done with Giger is have him die on Prospero, being Bjorn's brother. Bjorn, you know, is wounded, lost his arm, whatever, is now gathering up stuff before leaving Prospero, you know, ga- you know getting ready to leave, and, ca- and sees his, the corpse oh. of his dead brother on the floor, grabs the claw, wears it, and now we have the legend of Bjorn. No. That would have been perfect. I'm, now you got me going. I'm... I'm I'm actually gonna pull up this audio book and hear them say his name because now I must know how it's pronounced. Oh, well, do that after this because it doesn't yeah. matter now. No, but, I uh, am doing it now. I can do it once. Yeah, we ignore you. Um, uh, like, other, yeah. What were you saying? Like that was that would be the that I think was a, a lost opportunity on on yeah. on the Geiger counter and Bjorn. Yes, <laughs> that's how I look at his name because his name is uh, Geiger counter. Other good things, uh, not not the prime work and not special characters. I really like, and I'm gonna forget what they're called, but do they still have uh, the the gray hunters or whatever? Like the, the yeah. eldest guys that like say we're so awesome that we're the long things. Yeah. They're like we're awesome. We're gonna like you know go in scout armor kind of. Oh, no, that, the long things are their devastators, and they have the scout armor guys, and they're something else. Yeah, I thought they were gray hunters, the scout armor guys. I was trying to find no. them earlier. They're not like it's, a thing I think on the gray hunters or the gray slayers or whatever it is is like their tactical thing. Yeah, but it was I liked in their old stuff that they like they're like okay, all the new guys get power armor because they need to not die. That makes sense. The old guys that know what they're doing can decide to take off the power armor, go in scout armor to go do scouting. I like it's, that. It's a cool concept. The, my, the only reason I'm not too keen on it personally is the way the the uh, the creation of a space marine is described, where the black carapace is one of the last things to get fully mature and develop on them, and during that time they're a scout because they don't sure. get camp power armor. <laughs> it's just like it's not fully effective yet. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. It's just like, but now you 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 reverse that. Whatever. It's cool, but like weird. Uh, at the very least, I, just, I like the idea of like experienced warriors being your spec ops guys, being your recon and scouts, because that makes sense. Yeah, it makes perfect sense. It's a cool, yeah. good thing that they have. That. I don't know if it's still around because it's not on their product page. But It's not on their product page as well. Like, I, I don't know if they're still around. <laughs> I don't know either. Um, but it, it, I think it they got cool rid thing. of them and just figured you'll buy the Space Wolf upgrade pack to make them. Well, yeah, but I mean, at least, you know, I really didn't know they were going to show the... the Kit, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. To, to do it. Um, but yeah, there are like, I like the, the like I said, the Legion time period where the Emperor basically en- enacted rules and said, Space Wolves, this doesn't apply to you. Basically, like, yeah. He, he, and and what's what I also like is that Lima Rush was the second Primarch found. Yes. <clears throat> so I find that interesting because it helps reinforce because Lima Rush is present. Obviously, they built the Fang on this planet, but he was there with the Emperor as the Emperor had his architects who helped made his palace make the Fang to be a bastion out here of his might and basically gave the Space Wolves a lot of autonomy. And I'm going to put it in the like section just because if this, if they can, as a tentative thing to see if they continue this once Book 8 comes out, but I like that, you know. We seem to be retconning the Space Wolf Dark Angel thing to where it kind of makes some sort of sense now. Instead of them just being permanently angry at each other? Well, not that they're angry at each other. It's just that it was so, like, God, he said, she said, I'm phone tag that maybe one doesn't been understand up the other already, anymore, but makes no sense why that would be. Like, I like that. Like, if we're going to go mutual respect, tiled black I like how it's been described in Book 7. The footsteps of the. the like, it. 
I haven't yeah, I haven't read it yet, but I hear the Lehman Russ novel also does a very good job at describing the whole feuding between the two of them as well. Yeah, I haven't read that either. Sorcerer and his um, acolytes have left a wake of disturbed What I like about it, you know, for, meditation is that they have a Great rivalry with the Dark Angels. And what's interesting in Book 7 is the way they describe it. See, their course, they basically the say, and I'm going to quote here, Of their brother legions, they maintain something of particular camaraderie and rivalry in equal measure with the Dark Angels, with whom they have a shared dark passage of history. But for the others, they seem to have held a distant respect that most barely disguised the difference around them. Like, the Dark Angels are the only one they actually like as a brother legion because of their dark history with each other in a particularly dark battle that they fought alongside each other. And they have this rivalry because of that fact, because they actually, that's the only legion they respect. And I'm okay with that. Like, if we're going to put it that way and then we're going to flesh that out, and, and, and let's return that, let's reciprocate that on the Dark Angel fluff side when they do it, then fine. Perfect way to have the Lion and the Wolf rivalry. Because it, it'll at least be describe because the one problem with fluff from dw is we're not going to put it in a codex with three editions so you're not going to know why they hate each other <laughs> three editions you know it's like i think we're going to put it in there but we're going to water it down and not make it make any sense so i and like then we're going to we change it between codexes stuff. so it's not consistent <laughs> yeah so i like i like forge rule how they, they they put the kibosh on things and just go here it is and the story relax <laughs> it's like there so, you go. so they they got some good stuff going on for them. I I, I like their executioner status. Mm. Like yeah, I mean that, that is a cool thing. Like it's cool that the emperor goes, I'm gonna unleash the wolves because they're my wolves, they're my executioners. And it's sad that they're not still that case. In fact, in 40k, that's the Minotaurs now. Yep. The Minotaurs are unleashed as the executioners of the Imperium, basically. So it's like, oh, you lost your you lost your job. They took your jab. They took They jab. got too weird. They got they got too chaosy, frankly. Yes. They really did. So with that, real quick to kind of get things winding down a little bit. Um, how would you try to and this is gonna really tick people off, fix the space wolf conundrum? Like, what would you remove, add, change? To maybe make the space wolves, I don't want to say make them more blood angel y, but be, like, the blood angels, I think, have a good formula in their balance, right? They have, like we said, subtlety to it with some stuff being over the top, but it all works together and it's all done in a good portion. They bake a nice cake. You know what I mean? Like, if, you, if they were a recipe yeah. with ingredients, it would be a great cake. How would you do that for the space wolves? Um, I would. F- one thing that I that I would change really off the right off the top is change their perception of how their wolf priests work. Um, <laughs> I'm okay with them thinking that their 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 magic is safe and pure, but I want them to acknowledge it's the same warp thing and maybe rig it where they're safer because. They're using, you know, special ruins and maybe, you know, stuff from sacred trees from Fenris that distills and filters out the warp to make it safe for them. Kind of like how Magnus describes the power of the warp is distilled through his body into something pure. So it's like, have them, like, go that way. You know, okay, our wolf priests are safe because the sacred tree runes that they're using distills and purifies the warp so it's pure magic and not the chaotic stuff that you guys are tapping into. So it's more, we don't like your magic because you're using it unfiltered. You know, you've got, you know, I want to make a bad joke here, but I'm going to hold myself off of it. It's like, you've got unpurified water while we're using purified water. I'd rather that, because the way they have it now is making me really angry, and what you're typing, Phil, is most likely what I'm thinking. Oh, no, I was typing that. I was having audio issues, so I might not hear anything for a second. Yeah. <laughs> that's exactly what he was thinking. Um, that is exactly what he was thinking. having audio issues right now. Um, like, but, uh, I like that I concept. Change. Yeah, that's, that's a good concept. idea. Um, okay. Uh, you you good, um, Biz? Let's what see. else you got? Anything else, really? Um, 
if anything, I would, like, they've already kind of addressed one of the issues that I have with the Wolfen with, least, with recent books. I would just take that concept and make it like it's been there for a while. Okay. Where it's like, because it I find, you know, with the Dark Angels and the Blood Angels, I feel that that kind of thing is a little bit easier hidden. Whereas, because when a blood angel goes on a blood rage, there's no physical change. You know, space wolves, you know, transform into wolves when they go crazy. So I think it would also be nicer in the fluff where, where it's like, you know, they are looked at critically by the Inquisition because they are concerned that one day they will go nuts. And so then the whole them killing dudes is not because they may blab about the Wolfen, but because they may blab about a Wolfen episode that would make the Inquisition concerned that they're diving closer to chaos. Okay. That would be cool. Um, I got... Okay, yeah. I got some ideas. Uh, I got a lot of ideas. Are you ready for all these? Drop yeah. them down. Okay, so I think I have three or four things. So I'm just going to go through really fast. Uh, number one... Um, just make them good chaos. Like, have them literally say, we're using the powers of chaos to do good for the Empire. So they're still renegades at that point. Just, it keeps all their current fluff, except they say, like, screw it, uh, we're using chaos, let's just admit it, but we're using it for good. So the whole Imperium will hate them, but they're trying to do the good thing, you know what I mean? No, right, like, they gotta run towards it. Gotcha. Yeah, like, just be like, uh, I guess we are using chaos, but we're still trying to do good and right. Um, if they just admit it, I'd be cool with that. And the Imperium hates them, but they still love the Imperium. Like, that whole get-nice-love-hate relationship going on there. Uh, two, a completely... Oh, no matter what, definitely drop the stupid Storm Rider sled. And uh, <laughs> no matter what, drop the sled and drop the Thunderwolf Cavalry. Uh, if they drop the Cavalry, though, I do like that for Michigan Wolf packs. Uh, maybe push more of the Feral side of it. For now. Yeah. Yeah, you're, you're not talking anymore. Um, oh, sorry. Am, am I back? Yes, you're back. Yeah, you're back. We got that you want to get rid of the Thunderwolf Cavalry, but maybe keep oh, the no. Thunderwolves. The Fenrisian Wolves packs and make them a bit more feral, right? Yeah. <laughs> there he Skype doesn't Love want me. us to know. Um, damn it. <laughs> it let me know when you can hear me. I'm just going to keep going. La, 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 I can la, hear, la, hear you. Yeah. you. Calm down. <laughs> Damn it. Uh, sorry, guys. Uh, what was it? Uh, make the more primal. How about just completely chuck the whole Norse thing entirely? Keep the whole slowly turning into wolves over time bit. So, like, not like you rage out and become a werewolf for a second and turn back to normal. Just like they slowly as they get older, they get more and more wolf like. And maybe have them kind of try to be the nor try to be noble and primal at the same time, kind of like the flesh terrors are yeah. right now, where they're trying to stay like they're like we know and like we're hanging out, but we're it's what when, it's when you start trying to get overly complex with your explanation. Skype is like just stop. <laughs> it really is kind of like going Skype okay. going. Well, at least we got the flesh terror thing, right? Yes. Yeah, we got that. Okay, then I'll... So, like, just, like, I, I like the idea of them being, like, noble savages, maybe go that route with it, or, like, them slowly turning into wolves. And, again, you can just drop the whole Norse entirely at that point if you want to. Or, because I like your whole make the Norse and the Valhallans, make them, instead of being, like, general Norse, just say, like, they're really into, like, Asgardian mythos, or put that more into it. So you have more of a Thor and a more of an Allfather and an Odin and all that, and just go, like, make them more mystical and godly kind of thing like they're the gods of Fenris in a sense or like the higher beings of Fenris instead of like the warriors of Fenris it's funny you know. say that because they are the sky warriors of Fenris they're viewed as like the deities yes, of Fenris by the population when it's described they go the warriors from the heavens <laughs> will come down <laughs> and select somebody exactly. so they should go more and Ragnar was very like Wait a minute, you healed me, why can't you bring my friend back from the dead? And the apothecary's like, I didn't bring you back from the dead, you weren't dead, that's the difference. 
Your friend is dead. I cannot bring people back to life. If they pushed more in the uh, like but, these greater uh, beings on their planet and that godly concept, that'd be cool. Yeah. Yeah, Instead no, of them just being read, like... Read the no Ragnar novels. Like, the very first Ragnar novel, that's basically how they view them. Yeah. And they should make that more of their mythos then, also. They should. It's Instead so of just weird. being general Viking or saying just be like, we're Sky God. Uh, uh, Auto-tuned. But, uh... Um... Deal with it. <laughs> but you know that the thing is the pro I, I like that concept you brought up and that is how they're viewed but the space was like no but we're not gods no we're not nah. gods we're demigods except in that <laughs> but uh like the, so if they uh, accepted that concept I think that'd be a good thing for them yeah it would I, I mean I agree with you know get rid of this the, the um the Writing wolves. Get rid of. Get just get rid of anything that's not a wolf pack. Like the Wraith, the basic fantasy and wolves. So Dunhill Calvary, go away. Canis Fulford, go away. Murder Fang, go away. Go and away. Never come back. <laughs> go the, away. <laughs> the the sleigh, the Christmas sleigh of the space wolves needs to go away. Um, and so okay, so that's a lot. That's a lot of stuff purged right there. Um. I think if they get rid of all that stuff, they go the Asgardium route more so and not Norse. Give Valhallans their Norse stuff. So give Valhallans their, like, we're cheerful and we're going to have feasts for no reason. Give that to the Valhallans. Um, yeah. If they want to have them embrace the whole wolf aspect, like, if they if they took the as from you know, an Asgardian-esque type of approach the way Blood Angels have a Greco-Roman approach. You know, mostly aesthetics, that's really it. If they just did that and then had the whole we're feral we're feral brutal warriors that um, you know don't care about what you think about us, we're gonna do we're gonna do us. That would be better than what they got. The problem they got now is there are too many contradictions. Yeah. And they have they they pissed off the ecclesiarchy. They pissed off the sisters of battle because of that. They pissed off virtually all branches except the Orozinos of the Inquisition because the Orozinos are like, well, they're not aliens yet, so whatever. Um, I don't know those wolves, man. Um, and they did piss off the Grey Knights. Oh, they pissed off the Grey Knights too. Yeah, actually. they did. They like the Grey Knights nearly decapitated them. Yes, but, but then um, the Grey Knights come to their rescue a lot of the times. Well, yeah, because the Grey Knights are like. My guard, fine, we'll help you. Jeez, stop. Just just think for once. <laughs> like, but the Grants really don't like them, and neither does the Oromalias, because they're like, Damon! But, uh... They and they smell really it. don't like them now, after what Magnus pulled. Yeah. Like, they, the thing is, by all accounts, if they were not the Space Wolves, they would have been excommunicated as traitors long ago. Yes. The Relictors. The Relictors who went with a... Granted, it was more of a rogue Inquisitor, but still an Inquisitor who said, let's take these demon weapons and let's make them kill their own brethren because it's really good at killing other demons. And the Relictors went, that makes a lot of sense. We're going to be careful about it. We're going to study chaos to beat chaos. And they were excommunicated for it, right? Granted, they did it deliberately. They're renegades, full-on viewed as renegade, you know, don't serve their kind here type of deal. But they maintain, like, a lot of people, a lot of chapter who know about them say they're fighting still for the Imperium even though they've gone underground, quote-unquote, right? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, a much more direct path than the Space Wolves, almost, except for Logan said, blood, blood acts of corn, do your thing. That's about the same thing the Rolls Horse did. So, um... Uh, it, the, if they took the, if they stripped the contradictions away they did it like I'm okay with Wolfin if Wolfin were this more of this dank dark secret thing and less of the welcome back brothers you know what I mean like like it's more of a you smell weird I don't trust you type of deal I think it would be better I, I don't know I, I, I feel like more if they be the, okay, the chapter isn't a thousand strong, 
the problem with the Space Wolves is they're a, they're probably the closest to or were at some point in their timeline of fluff, still around a legion in strength. I think currently it's each company is two thousand strong. Right, and they got the well twelve company. Yeah, um, they got twelve companies. Each of them are twelve thousand. Well, technically thirteen because that's the wolf them. Yeah, but yeah. They, and they and they're each they're each at around this, at least the size of a chapter, which is big and huge, right? So, um, if they're gonna be close to the legion in size, well, without admitting it and having it just all hush hush and the fluff and whatnot, I think. And this is a more recent thing with Book 7. I think in future installments, they should really pursue the idea that Lima and Russ temper them and maybe use Bjorn as trying to keep them tempered. In, um, like, in recent fluff, it has been established that Russ couldn't see where Bjorn's fate was, so he decided to fashion it, and that's why he left him when he went on his crusade so he could watch over the chapter because he knew it was something he that he himself couldn't do so as Bjorn put it he left the chapter a nursemaid to watch over them to be that one link to the past right and if they, if they actually really start embracing that in, in codex build not just novel stuff it would be interesting because when I read them in book 7 you know, I'm not a Norse fan. I'm just not. I don't dislike it. It's just not my thing. But I was—I found them intriguing. But how that is what tampered them and Fenrisian culture and Lehman Russ's view on things and his elite and all that. And now, like, I look at it as the same way, you know, like you say, chaos. The funny thing about chaos is it's generic. Like, things that are chaosified feel really generic, which is weird because it's chaos and it should feel really specific. Yes. Like, chaos got Thing. But it, com- it comes across as feeling actually rather generic. And the Space Wolves, aside from looking the part and having that contradictory fluff, at the end of the day, in terms of growth as a chapter and a codex feel, a bit generic with some ludicrous things like Thunderbolt Calvary. <laughs> so yeah. I just think, you know, as you, we both have said, distill it down. Get it to a point where like they don't need everything. Like if if, he, if they ditch Norse entirely and embrace more of the the, the, the demigod nature as you as you described, you can still have it feel Norse esque. They're just not just deliberately Norse. Yeah. You know, like it's it's just if you you just gotta cut some of the fat out. And I want to reiterate to all the Space Wolf fans that. I harp on this a lot because this. I when I see the space wolves, I see a lot of really cool potential in what they got going for them. It's just buried under a lot of just too much noise, right? Like, because there's a lot of cool potential here. Like, there always has been, and the noise is just too great. Like, if a space wolf chapter, in its literal sense of being, you know, werewolf themed as a chapter, but and it having also subtle to it, can be really cool. And that's what. I think the space will really need to embrace. But, you know, what do we know? Uh, we're not fans of them, so our points are invalid. But <laughs> Is that how that works? I think so. Oh. But, um, I don't know. I just think they're co- also, like, can, I, I, they change color, period, plus heresy, whatever. But when you look at their models and how they're shown, they went from being like baby blue esque to gray blue esque to back to baby blue gray esque. Like, can we just settle on your now color, please? Can we just settle on it? Can we just, is it, is it going to be a brighter blue gray, or is it going to be more of like a slate storm gray? Just pick it and go. Um, I vote for the second one. Slate storm gray sounds cooler. Um, yeah. Mostly because I just like gray. You do like gray because you don't want to make choices. Color. No, I'm just um, like sitting in the middle of things. <laughs> Um, I think you just said the same thing with different words. Yeah. I think I did, yeah. Um, <laughs> one thing I will say, um, there, there, there's a lesson, I feel, in the Space Wolves that I think we should all acknowledge to better ourselves. And that is always have your pets chipped, because if they did, we would have found Russ by now. They would have if they had, if they had a chip in, his, chip in them. But, like... Yeah, but I mean, the, and the other lesson is, like, 
Notice we didn't say anything bad about the Space Wolf Venerable Dreadnought. It's got a bone skull wolf themed helmet where the head would be for like a Venerable Dreadnought form. It wields an axe and has a shield. I'm okay That's with awesome. that. Cool. Yeah, those cool. are so broken in game. Yeah, and it's cool. Not I, I, they won't get murder fang, and it's not cool. So like the over the topness of the visual, like I'm all for having an army that just makes Peter so mad, right? <laughs> That's what the Space Wolves are. They're the army that makes Peter mad. I'm okay with that. Meaning, if you want pelts everywhere and skulls everywhere and bone talismans and whatever everywhere, and you want to have your saga of champions told for your hero and be the, the legend of legends and have a force that's going to be gruff and rough around the edges and feral but cunning, I'm okay with that. But don't have a sleigh. Don't have an unhelmeted dreadnought. Don't have Thunderbolt Cavalry. <laughs> like, really, if they, just, if they mix all of that... The space wolves as they are now wouldn't be that bad. They're not. Yeah. yeah they're, they're not terrible. Like I've grown, I've grown to tolerate a lot of the stuff there, but I just can't like them. I can't just because they're everything aesthetically that I'm not a fan of. Wolves, I prefer uh, felines. Um, You're a the crazy Norse. Player. The, the crazy Norse mythos stuff going on about, and Asgardian stuff going on, not my cup of tea. You all know I like Greco-Roman and ancient Egyptian mythos. Uh, understatement of the year, you like Egyptian stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, so the Norse stuff just doesn't do it for me. It doesn't make me hate them. It's just that there's no, there's no way in which, unless I have a massive shift in my mythos enjoyment, I'll ever really take the spatials in any type of consideration that way. It's just not going to happen. And that's okay. Past that, I think they got some silly stuff going on that you, I look at them and I think half this stuff is suited for fantasy, right? Yeah. A fantasy setting. Like the Wolfen model, when I first saw that, I went, somebody mixed your Beastmen with your Space Marines. What happened here? You got the wrong models in Power Armor. They just got to go to Age of Sigmar. What are you doing? <laughs> it's like, like, that's what I thought. And I think that aspect, like, this is, while it's a sci fantasy game, 40k and over the top, you gotta stress the sci, not the fantasy. Or else you are left with beastmen in space. <laughs> and we already have that. It's called orcs. So. Whoa! That's orcs in space. Well, yeah, but that's what I mean. We have the fantasy in space right It's called orcs. Oh, I get what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Eldar, but we don't talk about that because they're not space elves, I swear. They're not. No, not at all. They're not. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, that just brought up an old memory of a stupid argument that I heard once. <laughs> nice. and are you going to share this stupid argument? I'll share it after this, because it's not really appropriate for a ramble about the Space Wolves. Okay. Fair enough. But, um, yeah, like, like the Space Wolf upgrade pack, the Space Wolf symbol, uh, symbology and all that, all of it's good. I think they jumped I, I the shark. I the head in the upgrade pack the most. That's probably the best looking head out of all the Space Wolf well, heads. That you can buy, yes, without having to buy burning a product from I think yeah. the Geiger Tower's head is fantastic. Um, it is um, pronounced Geiger. Yeah, Geiger. Geiger. Like, like Geiger. Geiger. Yeah, like Geiger counter. Yeah. Yeah, so Geiger's head, like Geiger, Geiger's model is fantastic. It is a cool looking model, and you can clearly tell it was supposed to be Bjorn until someone realized he wasn't the fell hand, and then you can you can definitely tell because when you look up Bjorn's art from the card game, it's it's almost the exact same thing you're looking at. It's like whoops, but uh, good thing but that like, intern got... noticed that. Yeah, well, he's got fantastic hair for a mo like modeled well, like it's not just like. Like, clearly being modeled as spaceful for you shampoo. Is, like, did you ever see yeah. Gregor, um, Gregor, um, Phil? Nope, I'm looking him up right now. Okay. Just go to the Burning of Prospero box set on GW's website. He's, He's the, the space only space wolf model. <laughs> yeah. Burning of Prospero box. Yeah. Like, really, if I was a space wolf player, I would buy the box for that model. Yeah. And use it as a whole floor. Like it's it's a fan, like you guys got a fantastic model out of that. A fantastic model you can use post heresy, unlike Ireland's. Um Yeah. <laughs> yes. So uh 
while you're looking that up, any clothes? Oh man, oh uh, he's he's good, right? That is that's a gorgeous space wolf model. It's yeah, like one of the only good ones in the line. <laughs> it really so is. It does a lot of things like right. Yeah, no, I mean I don't like oversized backpack or silly stuff on it, but this does it well. Yeah. So any any closing thoughts to to appease the space wolves out there? Um, space wolves are actually not that bad. We really just have a couple of things that are game breakers for me, but overall, they're they're whatever. They're fine. They're they are they're like like we've said. There's a lot of potential, but as they are now, I just can't like them. Bjorn's cool. Russ is cool. The rest can die in a fire. Uh, actually, uh, one last thing. After talking about ways to fix it, I totally do want to make, like, a slowly turning to Wolfen, like, side chapter now. <laughs> the Wolf Brothers? Like, like, I, I kind of, I don't know. I have to see if there's already some, some I'm the sure Wolf someone's Brothers. done something already. But, like, I kind of want to take that whole, just like that, like, we're, we're werewolf, space marines, and we're awesome. I just want to take that concept uh, and make a side chapter. chapter. Blood Raw, Whatever. not Blood Mane, um, Blood, um, the Red Maw, his, that's his chapter. His company. Yeah, but not any of his stupid crap, so my own thing. Well, you don't yeah. use him at all. You, just... you use one of his <laughs> Wolf Lords. Sure. Uh, yeah, because he technically has Wolf Lords, that's, that's true. But, uh, you know, the Space Wolves, like we said, great potential in there. It's all that potential that make me ultimately have no interest in them. And aside from just not having interest in, in all of their inspiration, which I don't. And that really hurts, you know, obviously the popularity side of things for me personally. But I think it's there's so there's too much potential, not enough, not enough actuality going on for the Space Wolves is the best way I can put it. Yeah. Like, and I, I feel like a rough draft. Yeah, like it, it's they haven't been finalized past a rough draft is how it feels. That's a really good way of putting it. But... They got a lot going for them, and I feel like, like when when Biz and I or Matt and I did the Dark Angle Rambo, we 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 brought up stuff that we don't like for the Dark Angles that should be fixed or 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 made better, right? And I think with Space Wolves players, you know, I think I think it's it's worth it as a fan of anything to acknowledge your shortcomings and the, and the absolute silliness, and if if, if if you're not, if you're a Space Wolf fan and you don't acknowledge how silly Thunwolf Calvary are, you're just not being honest. I'm sorry, you're really not. <laughs> like we have battle tanks with cannons the size of their heads, and you and you don't think it's a silly idea to ride it into battle. I'm not. I, I'm not talking about how effective the unit can be rules wise in a game because they 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 used to be absolute beat sticks. They're right? super broken right now. Right. What are Thunwolf Calvary yeah. are super broken right now. Seriously? Yes. Yeah, they're really powerful. They've got three. They've got um three up invon saves and like rerollables. They're just like unkillable. Uh, they're they're beat sticks. And, and rule capability aside, it's not what I'm talking about. Just when you look at them and their concept, if you, if you can't say it's silly, I don't honestly think you're being honest with yourself on that fact. So that aside, you know, obviously we're not saying don't like them. We're not saying you're stupid for liking them. Not at all. It's just that. For us, I find it I find it fun to poke the wolf, poke the bear sometimes, um, mm -hmm. and I think it's it, it, I think it's helpful to see why people have different reasonings for not liking the same thing because the three of us do have slightly different reasonings. Like, there's a lot of overlap because there's a lot of stuff to overlap with space wolves. But yes. um, yeah, ultimately at the end of the day, I, I really think if their if their fluff was taken in a direction and just taken down one path and not fifteen paths, you could get a really solid chapter out of it. Really could. Yeah. And that's mm -hmm. partly GW's fault in terms of actually progress storyline, please. <laughs> like like they kinda are, but at the same time it's like progress, halt, back up, progress, halt, back up. It's like can we just progress? But <laughs> You're asking too much. I know, right? Uh, so thanks for backing me up and being part of the hate that will probably happen in the comment section. Yes, but you know, every so often it's gotta happen. And um, yeah, I don't know what will be next in Ramble, uh, in a Ramble cast, but probably a Ramble thousand cast sons because we haven't talked about them yet, and you te and you teased that last time. Yeah, a thousand sons, a thousand ways to die to sorcery. Um, in the there West, there are a lot of ways to die to sorcery in the West. That. That's a good title for a Black Library book. Start writing. Start writing now, I demand it. Anyways, uh, I was joined by Max and Phil. From Fearless Both Games. of which can, 
if you, you know, yeah, exactly. Cleverly enough and, and pluggy enough, we're, all three of us are part of Fearless Games. We do a Fearless Games podcast every month. You can always check that out if you like these really random tangents that we do. Well, that's about all we do on that. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, Sometimes with a cohesive theme. Sometimes. And it's and it's not, like, obviously here at, at, at the Fortress Monastery, it's 40k. And occasionally a battle tech thing when I'm really bored. Um, there, it's much more open world. So, yeah. Yes. So, that's going to be it. Thanks for the, thanks for the long-winded space of ramble. I wanted to give them proper due. I didn't want them to be cut off for time. So, this is going to be quite the feat. And uh, until the next one, anybody with questions, comments, requests, hate, put it in the comments. Keep it civil. Keep it straightforward. And uh, take it easy. Peace. Bye.